Often, when we have a distribution, we want to be able to describe it to other people. And while we've been doing this with very simple distributions by, say, listing all the probabilities of a discrete distribution, as these probability distributions get more complicated, we'll need to have more compact ways of describing what these distributions are like. Now I'm going to talk about expectation and entropy, two very specific ways that we use to describe what a distribution is like. So let's start with an expectation. In the completely general form, we often take the expectation of some function of a random variable. And then, for every value that the random variable can take on, we apply that function to the value and multiply it by the probability of that value happening. So for a continuous random variable, this is an integral, and for a discrete random variable, this is a sum. This notation may be a little bit intimidating. We'll break it down into a concrete example in a little bit. But before we do, let's think about what happens if we take the expectation of something that isn't a random variable. So if we take the expectation of a constant a with respect to a random variable x, or whatever random variable, we're just going to get the same constant back out. And often, when people talk about the expected value of a distribution, they're now taking an expectation of the identity function. That is, take the value of every random variable that a probability distribution can take on, and multiply it by its probability. And when you take that expectation, that corresponds to the average value that your distribution will take on. Or if you think about it visually as, say, your distribution sitting on a teeter-totter, the expected value is where you could put a fulcrum or a pivot so that the probability distribution would balance. You would have as much to the left as you do to the right in terms of probability mass. So let's compute a very simple example. What's the expected value of a roll of a single die? So there are six possible outcomes that the die can take. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each of those has probability one six. So if we write out the formula of the expected value, we take each of those values and we multiply it by one six, we add those together, and we get three and a half. We can do exactly the same thing with a more complicated distribution. So let's say that we roll two dice and we take the sum. What is the expected value of that sum? So here we have a much more complicated outcome space. There are 11 different outcomes, two, three, four, up to 12. And we're now going to have a more complicated probability distribution as well. Some outcomes are more likely than others. But we get a very intuitive answer. As we compute this expectation, we get seven, which is double the expectation of a single die. And this makes sense because these two outcomes are independent, and so we could have broken out those two expectations into the expectation of the first roll and the expectation of the second roll, added them together. But if you do it the more complicated way, it also works out. Another way that we'll talk about how to measure properties of a probability distribution is entropy. Entropy is used in physics to measure how chaotic or disorderly a system is. And the higher the entropy, the more chaotic, the more disorganized a system is. The concept of entropy was pioneered by the Austrian physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, uh, who worked for most of his life in Germany. If you look at the tombstone of Ludwig Boltzmann, you'll see that the formula for entropy is above his head. And so uh, he thought that this was an important enough achievement that it should be enshrined on his tombstone. Despite the origin of entropy in statistical mechanics or physics, we use entropy in data science. We'll use it when we talk about decision trees, because when we try to make a decision, we want our decision to reduce the uncertainty of the thing that we're trying to predict. And we'll also see entropy when we talk about choosing between various hypotheses. And often, when we don't know what's going on, we want to choose the model that has maximum entropy, given that it matches constraints that we have on our data. So before I talk about the definition of entropy, I want to have an aside about logarithms. And so hopefully everyone remembers what a logarithm is, but in case you've forgotten, 
A logarithm is basically a function that makes big numbers small. And the way that it makes big numbers small is by seeing how many times you can divide something. Now, in this class, we'll talk about logarithms of various bases. We can talk about logarithms in base e, in which case we'll often write ln, or we'll talk about logarithms in base 10, in which case we'll normally write log, log. Or, if we're talking about logarithms base 2, like we are now, we'll use lg. Uh, or, sometimes we'll talk about logarithms of a totally different base, say, like we're using logarithms in base 3, and then we'll write log with a subscript 3. So, let's talk about logarithms base 2. So, the logarithm of 1 in base 2 is 0. And one way of intuitively thinking about logarithms is how many times would you have to cut a carrot to get that number of pieces. So if you want one piece of carrot, you have to cut a carrot zero times to get one piece of carrot, because that original carrot is one piece of carrot, right? Okay, so the base 2 logarithm of 2 is 1. So if you want to get two pieces of carrot, and you have a carrot, how many times do you need to cut the carrot to get two pieces of carrot? You need to cut it once. So you cut a big carrot in half, you get two pieces of carrot. Okay, so all of that should be very simple. Now, let's say that you want to get four pieces of carrot. How many times do you need to cut a carrot to get four pieces? All right. So let's think about this. You first cut your carrot in half, and now you have two pieces of carrot, but you can take this piece of carrot and move it on top of the other half. And now you cut those all together at once. And so now you have, with two cuts, four pieces of carrot. So here is cut number one, here is cut number two, and you have one, two, three, four, pieces of carrot. Right? Okay. Now let's say you want eight pieces of carrot. How many cuts do you need to get eight pieces of carrot? You need three cuts, and so that means the base 2 logarithm of eight is three. So to do that, you first cut your carrot in half. Then you take one half and put it on top of the other, and you cut that again. And so as we saw before, that gives you four pieces, and you line all of those up, and with your third cut, you cut them in half, and now you have eight pieces in total. And this keeps going and going, and you can see that as you cut, each time you cut, you're getting far many more pieces, so the logarithm takes big numbers and makes them small. So hopefully I refreshed your memory about what a logarithm is. Let's talk about how that fits into entropy. Hopefully you'll remember from your math class, or you'll believe me, that this definition of logarithms extends to non-integers as well. As you go from 4 to 8, you can take the logarithm in between, and it scales in a reasonable way. However, it does not apply to negative numbers, so you can only take the logarithm of things greater than zero. Okay, so now we have all of the pieces that we need to define what entropy is. So entropy is the negative expectation of the log of a probability distribution. So if you plug that into either a discrete or a continuous distribution, you get the following formula. So we'll see more examples of entropy as we go through the course, but hopefully you can start to see some of the properties that the entropy function will have. One thing that you'll notice is that the entropy doesn't care about the values that a probability distribution takes on, it only cares about how the probability weights are allocated to those values. You should also be able to see the extreme situations where entropy can be very high or very low. So you get minimal entropy if all of the probability is associated with one and only one outcome. That is the minimum entropy value that you can get. And the entropy is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. And so if you place all of your probability mass onto one point, your entropy will be zero. If you spread it out evenly over all possible outcomes, that will be the highest possible entropy that you can get. But how big the entropy gets depends on how many different values your distribution can take on. I realize this has been a lot, but 
Probability is really important to understanding data science, and as we work through these very essential concepts, we'll be building the foundation of what we'll use for the rest of this course. Next time, we'll start talking about conditional probabilities, which will make the interactions between random variables a lot richer. In class, we'll work through a lot of examples to give you a better intuition for what it means to have probability distributions and to do operations like marginalization and to take measurements of properties of distributions like the expectation or the entropy.